Hello and welcome to another episode of a Rod Review. Today I will be reviewing Predators, a science fiction action movie written by Alex Litvak and Michael Finch. It was directed by Nimrod Antal and produced by Robert Rodriguez. The movie was released in 2010 and distributed by 20th Century Fox. The film follows a group of Earth's deadliest killers as they wake up to find themselves dropped into a mysterious jungle. Despite their differences, they must team up if they are to have any chance of survival, let alone escape. Pitted against them is one lone survivor, driven insane by his isolation, a serial killer in their midst, and the title characters, the Predators themselves. The film stars Adrian Brody as Royce, a highly capable mercenary who has to choose between being a lone wolf or looking out for the others in his party. Despite not normally playing a tough guy, Brody plays the role well and his overly gruff Batman voice is a nice touch. I also liked his keen tactical mind, as shown during his ambush of the super predators in their own camp and his analysis of them afterwards. Alice Bragger plays Isabel, a sniper who is strangely cooperative for a lone wolf. I liked that she had enough experience at working in Earth's tropical rainforests, but she could tell they weren't on Earth anymore. Lawrence Fishburne stars as Nolan, the crazed survivor of a previous hunt. I liked that his isolation had caused him to conjure one of the predators he had killed as an imaginary friend. Topher Grace plays Edwin, a doctor, and given his lack of combat experience, he is the apparent odd one out of a group. Despite this, he does have an interest in plant-based toxins. The other human characters, Hanzo, Mombasa, Cuchillo, Nikolai, and Stans, all add extra flavour to their band of misfits. As for the Predators, Tracker, Falconer, Berserker, and the classic Predator all have their own distinct style and add some variety to the Predator culture. Especially the Berserker, which is much bigger than the classic Predators, and is revealed to be something quite different to what we've seen in the previous movies. The design of the Predators and their masks looks great. I loved the jaw attachment of Berserker's mask, well, I think Trackers is my favourite because of the tusks. I also thought the insect-like alien they ran into looked interesting, although I would have liked a clearer view of it. The settings look good, and the location scouts found a nice green forest to film in. Meanwhile, the Super Predator's camp is a charnel house filled with hoarded body parts, and the ruined alien drilling complex is both mysterious and claustrophobic. The CGI gas giant the moon is orbiting looks good too. As for the action in the film, though it is tense, it is also filmed in a way that makes it easy to see what is going on. John Debney produced an excellent soundtrack for the film, and although a lot of the tracks are remixed versions of the original movie, there are a number of purely original pieces as well. A lot of the best pieces are featured towards the end of the movie, and the track Hanzo's Last Stand is particularly good, as it acts as the backdrop to Hanzo's duel with a falconer predator, and it has a historical Japanese feel to it. This movie gives us more flavour and depth to the Predator's universe than any of the previous movies have. The ruined alien drill on the world suggests there are probably more sapient species in the universe than just humans and predators. While the skulls piled up around the raised spikes might indicate they were being offered as tribute to some divinity in the Predator's culture. I enjoyed seeing a new type of Predator in this movie, and according to avpcentral.com, the super predators in this film are a subspecies of the normal predator. This clan genetically enhances themselves with the traits of the species they hunt. And that's why when the berserker removes its mask, it looks very different from the normal predators. As always, I like to see the predators get new war gear to play with, and this movie doesn't disappoint. The predator's arsenal is expanded to include a scout drone that folds away neatly into Falconer's shoulder, electrified leg traps, and the Predhounds. I also like the insectoid alien that was dropped onto the moon with them. 
in Dark Horse Press's iteration of a Predator's universe, an insect-like species called the Amengi is mentioned. In their version of the lore, the Amengi had once enslaved the Predators, but after shaping them into brutal gladiators, they were overthrown in a rebellion. Lacking technical skills, the Predators decided to enslave the Amengi and used them to build and maintain their own technology. These Amengi might have been the inspiration for the insectoid alien in this film, as we do see a lot of insects around the cage it was dropped in, and a few on its dead body. This movie has plenty of memorable scenes, as characters and predators get picked off one by one. The movie's intro is thrilling, as Royce comes to find himself plummeting through the air towards the ground. I also like Hanzo's samurai-style sword fight with a falconer predator, and Royce's assault on the berserker at the end, where he uses Edwin and a bunch of grenades as a trap that mirrors the predator's own trap with Kuchilu. He then blinds the predator's heat vision by surrounding it with fire, while he hacks at it with an axe. And finally, the scene at the end is quite cool, with fresh prey being dropped in, and the implication that this is far from over for them. Yes, of course you should watch this. It's a cool science fiction action horror movie. In my opinion, it is as good as the original. It does a great job of individual characterization, along with plot development and action. This is a science fiction action movie, and it doesn't deviate from that. If I have one real quibble, it's that we never get to see a sequel. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. As with all YouTube videos, please feel free to leave a like, a comment, share and or subscribe. And I guess you'll hear from me in the next video. Goodbye for now.